I asked a question. I could feel this, like this, take, this energy building inside of me. And I asked the question of my guides after all of this time and after all of the searching and seeking and discovery and experiments, what is the most important thing that we can do to find what we are looking for? And out of the sea of awareness, the answer came, let go of struggle and know who you really are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Being Inspired Radio Show. I am your host, Amanda Johnson, and I am back with another wonderfully inspiring episode. What's great is I can say that with utter confidence before even having this conversation, because first of all, that is how life works. The world is our reflection. What we intend is what we experience. And I am seeing that more and more and more throughout my life. And so, yes, this is an inspiring conversation that is about to occur. It has already happened in one way, shape, or form, given that there is really no time in the way we understand it. And so here we are with another guest who is going to inspire, uplift, open your heart to something beyond what you may be consciously aware of now, or maybe something that you've been thinking about and and contemplating for years now, but something that we say today I trust will spark something within you that will shine a light on who you truly are. We are not going to say anything that you don't already know, but we may serve as a reminder, as an inspiration. And of course, my intention with this show is that it is inspired. We follow spirit, the divine guidance in terms of what I ask, in terms of what she shares. And together we co-create this beautiful container, this beautiful space that is here for you, for all of us to reveal and express more of who we truly are. And so I'm very excited to introduce you to a new woman in my life, a sister, of a soul sister of sorts who I have connected with recently, Marianne McGuire. And I'm excited especially to share with you who she is and, and what she stands for. And when she's shared with me her her bio, you know, what what words can I use to describe her? They resonated so strongly with me. And here's why, and you'll you may feel the same as I read her her words. Uh, Marianne McGuire's work comes from a profound spiritual experience she had as a small child. She was shown certain fundamental universal truths. The best way she can describe it is that she was shown the truth behind this reality about how life works, who we really are, the nature of time and polarity. She was made aware that there existed something so far beyond this physical reality, so inexplicably beautiful, even beyond our idea of heaven and that it is all around us and within us, and that this state of beingness is so utterly expansive. Now she serves as a guide to let go of stress, anxiety, loneliness, and struggle, that feeling of swimming against the tide of life and start living from who we really are by deeply connecting with divine guidance and expressing our truth and creativity so that we can live from a peaceful place of knowing our purpose and can finally relax into the creative, fulfilling, juicy lives we were born to live. And so with that, Marianne, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I absolutely love how you work. I love everything you said. It's exactly how I work, the resonance, setting the intention, everything. I'm so honored to be here. And it's an absolute pleasure to share this time with you and your amazing listeners. Thank you. Mm, Absolutely. And of course, I just am tickled that I get to have conversations with people (laughs) who not only resonate with me on a soul level, they are from all over the world. I I love to be reminded of how truly interconnected we all are. And so uh, for those listening, of course, you can hear that I'm having Marianne coming in from um, Ireland. And what part in Ireland are you again? Remind us. It's just kind of south of Dublin. So I do live in the countryside. Um, I have a a wildlife sanctuary here and a horse sanctuary and it's it's on the east coast so i can i can it, the, the sea is kind of far away but i can see it so i'm i'm delighted with that i always want to be kind of close to the sea but i do love it it's, it's in the countryside 
Mm, you get the best of both worlds, the water yes, exactly. in the distance and exactly. the country and your horses and your sanctuary in the land. And I've, Ireland has a very special place in my heart. So thank you for bringing the Irish um, essence and, and energy to our conversation today. So as I said, we'll be inspired to see where our conversation leads us. And yet you've already said it, it was in your bio, it's who you are, Marianne, that, you know, creativity is a very important part of you and your your life and what you stand for and what i've really enjoyed in terms of the conversations i have with my amazing guests are, is that i want i open with a very well simple not necessarily easy question to to open up the dialogue to open up the conversation because i really do believe that we all have a why and some of us know it more clearly than others, and it's okay if we do or don't. Simply asking ourselves that question, though, can really open the door to something. And so even those of you listening, you might start to go, yeah, why do I do what I do? And, and, and that question alone can start to peel back some layers and reveal something to us about ourselves. So Marianne, that's how I'm going to start our conversation today is by asking you, why do you do what you do? <laughs> I want to laugh out loud at that. Um, sometimes I wonder how much choice there was in the matter, but it is based on my rather unusual uh, childhood experience, this uh, that you alluded to in the bio, the, the profound spiritual experience I had as a child. That, you see, um, I never spoke about that. I only spoke about that recently. I, I'm a really private person. Uh, it was just a part of who I was. It was intrinsic within me. And I didn't really have anybody to talk to about that kind of thing. Anyway, so that in, in with Let, Let Go Know, which I uh, came to me 10 years ago, um, that's wh why I'm doing it. It blossomed, it unfurled within me, um, as you mentioned in the bio. I was shown certain fundamental universal truths and it's, I get very excited when I think about it because I know, as I'm pretty sure you and your listeners know, it, this isn't all there is, this reality. It, I, I was aware at a very young age, that this, was, this was like a dream. I don't want to say it's an illusion because in a way you can kind of almost put it down. And it's a beautiful experience. Life on earth is a beautiful experience. It's bloody trying, of course, as well. Um, but it is a beautiful experience. But I was totally aware that there is something so far beyond what we perceive with our senses and even far beyond our idea of heaven and mm. and that it is within us and all around us and so what we're living is only this teeny weeny part of our truth and that's what I love to do connect people with their truth so that they can tap into who they really are and live from there so that all and that's why I do it like who, because of who I am and because mm -hmm. I'm so utterly in love with spirit and tapping into spirit and receiving creative guidance and um it's all, it's just the way life happened because even though i experienced being pure awareness and it was more real than i can describe like it was beyond words or concepts and obviously i wasn't able to articulate when i was six um even though i went through all that in contrast to that amazing well, beautiful experience I went through childhood feeling very contracted because I wasn't allowed to express myself. I wasn't allowed to have an opinion. I had to be nice. I had to be obedient. Uh, so there were, my two main wounds were power and expression, lack of power, lack of expression. Not allowed. Not allowed. End of story. Very strict, very strict upbringing. So it's because of the, my past is why I'm doing what I am now. Because when I was 18, I wanted to feel that connection with spirit. I wanted to feel that truth more. Um, and I wanted to be able to feel it whenever I wanted to. I, you know, it was, I knew it was who I was, but because I was conditioned, I felt disconnected from it. And so I started to study and search and I became an artist and a healer. And um, literally I did that for 20 years, 20 years until one day I got really tired of it. Mm -hmm. And even though it was beautiful and exciting and fulfilling, and, and I did adore it. It was kind of like comfort, you know, searching. I knew that there was something, I knew I was just like missing the point and I really had to come to terms with the fact that I had everything within me already. And I stopped and I, I asked a question. I could feel this, like this, this energy building inside of me. And I asked the question of my guides after all of this time and after all 
of the searching and seeking and discovery and experiments, what is the most important thing that we can do to find what we are looking for? And out of the sea of awareness, the answer came, let go of struggle and know who you really are. And in that moment, I committed to it. Mm. And that's mm. why I do what I do now. That is amazing, Marianne. And I, I had chills multiple times as you were talking, which for me is an indicator that you spoke truth for me, that I resonated with the truth you were sharing for yourself. And what I love is one thing I'll, I'll offer is it's why I love this question so much is it's, I feel true for all of us. Some of us are more aware of it than others, that the reason we do what we do to in this, in our today, whether that be our career, quote unquote, or simply how we show up, to whom we show up, you know, what we choose to share or not share. And mm -hmm. it can become our mission ultimately yes. it is because of our, who we, yes. who we were as a child. It's, it's always who we are, but there's something typically yes. in our childhood that occurs. And when we get really curious about that, we'll start to see that. And of course it is, it feels, there seems to be no surprise that you, which I want to get into a little bit more, but you had this experience and, and, and then you weren't allowed to mm. know it. You weren't allowed mm. to share it. You weren't, I mean, you could know it, but you certainly weren't allowed to experience mm. it or share yeah. it with others. And so if I, I'm, I, my, my whole being is like, well, of course, then this is your mission mm. is to ensure others don't experience that same thing. Cause we are here to teach what we are here to learn. We are here to share what it is that we have um, overcome or are moving through. And so for you in your life, you had to eventually let go of maybe the, the, the upbringing, the, the mm -hmm. um, feeling perhaps like you couldn't, all of that very strong input on the outside and let go of that struggle, uh, of maybe the inner struggle of not sharing it and really remember and know fully this experience that you had, this awareness that you mm -hmm. had at a very young age. And I think that's really beautiful and inspiring. Mm. And I would love, if you are willing, I'd love to know more about that experience. Are you willing to share more with us? Yeah, it's funny, Amanda, I am. Great. Absolutely willing. Perfect. The funny thing about it is, and I think about it sometimes, because it was ineffable, because there are no words to describe it, I actually get slightly frustrated because I feel... Um, actually, I write poetry and I, I love writing so much and I can express it better through poetry and I'm an artist I, I, as I said I became an artist 18 I feel that I can express it better through writing and art funny enough because I painted light I noticed I look back at some of my work I thought oh my god they're actually quite dark then even though I'm an extremely light person there's always light top right hand corner always light always painting light and I was on my path and god bless me I, I nearly drove myself mad looking for my path. Am I on my path? Am I on my path? Am I on my path in my twenties? And am I, um, that's why I had to stop the pressure I put on myself. Mm -hmm. And now I, t I help women mainly um, to find their life's purpose so that they can live their deeper destiny. But oh my God, people think it's this kind of, oh yeah, that's nice. Airy fairy. Oh, life's I must get around to that one day. Oh my God, no, it's actually quite debilitating. I mean, you know, lying awake at night when you know there's something inside of you that's huge and magnificent and you cannot put your finger on, you know there's something missing. That bloody separation is so awful. That's why I'm here to help women through that and to go from separation to oneness. Because to go back to your question, that's what my experience experience was about mm. beyond duality into oneness beyond two into one you know the duality of right wrong good bad and all of that that's in this world the judgment and the, the mind chatter and everything beyond all of that duality into oneness the heart is the portal um, you know, you get there through presence, through the present moment, there. There's no get there, but you see how words are so limiting. <laughs> You're here already, but um, you know what I mean. So um, it was all to do with oneness, it, and, and it was light. 
and it was beauty and it was like we're just playing a game here and like I was a baby I can remember being a baby standing in my cot being pure awareness and it's funny like I do feel and I, I also help like the wound of a lot of the, the, the people I work with is belonging they don't belong they feel like they don't belong so I help them with that because um, I never really felt like I fit, fitted in I mean creative artistic into writing adoring animals this weird childhood the whole victorian thing um it, the whole thing was just bizarre i don't know how to explain it to be honest well, <laughs> it's oh, Marianne, i am so again i'm feeling more inspired now even hearing your <laughs> attempt at com- expressing <laughs> that because <laughs> what i heard was this magical revelation for me, not for necessarily for you, of, and that is, I actually had, I had made the note of, I wanted to ask where the, the painting and the creativity had come in a way. And I think, ah, that was how, if I may make an assumption, or at least it's what I think I heard you say, that is how you could express the unexpressible, how you could put into words yes. or form that which has no yes. words or form. And I was, yes. I have, I've had a musician on, a very talented musician on this show before. And he talks the same about, I mean, music is a universal language and, and lucky for music, music alone, not with lyrics, but just music. You don't have to deal mm. with words. <laughs> you don't have to try to find the yeah. words that work because to your point, yeah. words can be so limiting and we mm. put so much meaning behind words and we get attached to words. And, and all of a sudden when we can step out, and I imagine this is true for so many artists and so many creatives, there's a, a way of of sharing our knowingness, our beingness, yes. our truth in a way that does not require this very constricted, limiting, you know, word definition. Because Absolutely. art is interpretive, right? We can interpret it. We use metaphors. Yeah. So I love that. And, and so do you have more to say about that in terms of the creativity? Mm, no, I'm just tuning into what you're saying. You're mm. absolutely right. Because it's about, isn't it, frequency. Like I am, I'm in love with sound vibration, with sound. I've got this thing about sound. And I'm, I'm, I'm so how can I explain it? Uh, so like I use tuning forks uh, for healing as well. I'm into frequency. Um, and information is carried on sound waves. So you don't necessarily have to use words anyway. And presence, you can just be in silent presence. I mean, let me give you an example. Um, so the, the profits from my work go to my horse sanctuary, free to be horse sanctuary. And I have, um, like, I've, I've an unbroken stallion. So unbroken means not trained. Now, unbroken stallions are notoriously dangerous to be around not always now not always and this this fella is very gentle but you don't really you have to kind of know what you're doing and i'm not saying i do know what i'm doing um but you know my husband does know more but you don't mess around with an unbroken stallion um because they're extremely unpredictable now i and i posted it yesterday i have a picture of me he's lying down i'm lying down on top of him my eyes are closed his eyes are closed and it's adorable and um the the reason I can do this, Amanda, is because how I'm feeling within is presence. He knows he can trust me. Am I using words? No. It's the point you just made. We don't need words. He's tuning into me. He, all he can feel is love in my body, in my heart. And he knows he can trust me because one of my big things because I, I adopted about 100 cats over my life more and I just have this thing where I want animals to know that they can feel safe with a human so any abused animals or anything like that if it takes me 10 years to get a cat to trust me I will take 10 years to get that cat <laughs> to trust me it's like my my thing when I was younger I had this desire like this I can't explain it I was so focused on rescuing kittens especially and they'd always find me in a skip or I'd be passing by oh there's one in the skip there's one on the side of the road whatever but the point is animals know so we don't need this creative force we don't need words they can sense it and if you want to experiment you go to your pet or you go to the park you know something if you don't have any animals around you you are this pure frequency you are this creative energy it's not that you're a creative person no you are 
consciousness itself. You are the creative force itself. And I'm not just talking about painting and writing. I'm talking about parenting, writing copy for your business, like setting up a business, whatever it is. This is the juicy creativity I'm talking about. You know, I'm not just talking about sculpture and poetry or anything like that. Life, you need to be creative in life, you know, no matter what you're doing. So absolutely, you know, it is beyond words. Um, and tools are amazing, I have to admit, because I love, con I do love concepts and I'm a very abstract person, but man, do I love practicality. I mean, you're living this life and you know, you could be dealing with children, dealing with people who are annoying you, whatever it is, you need the tools. And I felt totally blessed, blessed after my experience of receiving, I, I was downloaded with the let go and know for about a month, a program, how to let go of struggle and know you really are three stages of awareness, becoming aware connecting with awareness and living from awareness or creativity like awareness creativity is the same thing mm. and i was given um these tools to like deal with life and tap into your creativity and one I tool that i was oh i want to get into those yeah. tools, but i want to first i want to repeat something so hold where oh, yeah I really make sure your my audience and our audience hears this our awareness is creativity. I didn't want them to brush over that. That is significant. Yeah. Literally, that just made me go, oh, because I think of how often we talk about being aware, be aware, notice, be mindful. Yeah. And that is what I heard you say is our creativity, where our creativity stems from. We are all creative beings. It's not reserved mm. for the painter or the poet. Mm. I really want the audience. I really want you all to hear this. It's not that you're sitting here saying, go paint a picture or write a poem. You're saying, use you are in essence creativity creative force is running throughout you there's and it's tuning into that frequency and so yes now i want to know then how do we do that or how do we turn in how do we tune in to our creative frequency well see I, there's a fundamental tool i'm not sure if we could go into should go into it here um let me see mm -hmm. It's the fundamental, it's so important. Like I'm, I, I love it so much I, and I can, I, do, I can tell you, it's very important um, to go into that. So one of the tools I was given, and I will answer your question. It's just, I've got about a million things to say and I'm trying to focus. So one of the tools I was given, um, because I, I do want your listeners to have practical uh, ways. I just want them to go home with practical, valuable, juicy, you know, information. So I knew that I to what I had absorbed and this this energy came to me one day very similar to the other but just before that divine download so to speak and I knew I had absorbed basically too much information and a space opened up for me and I was given the words fall back and the most profound and beautiful awareness revealed itself to me in those moments and I was guided to a simple found beautiful divine surrender where i finally surrendered to love and I, and I just want to make it very clear when i say surrender i'm you don't give up anything if you give up anything it's your loyalty to your false self <laughs> and this was a soft powerful surrender into who you really are so in that case it was who i really am and I had found what I had been looking for. I had found total peace. I melted into my own being. I fell back into presence, into awareness, into tr truth. I fell back home. Mm -hmm. And here, labels are meaningless. I mean, you can't hold on to problems because they're not personal. You realize, I think you just laugh out loud because it's like, oh my God. What was I worried about? This isn't even personal. And you move through illusions and you merge with your spirit. And you just realize, now this, this happened over years for me, and I'm putting it into sentences, you know, but ego isn't real. Ego, it's like a filter that you used. So, and you realize, I mean, the day I realized that fear wasn't real, psychological fear, not, not the fear we need, like there's a 
elephant coming your way and you better get out of the bloody way, that fear is good. You say, thank you very much for having that fear. I'm talking about psychological fear. The day I realized psychological fear wasn't real, my jaw dropped. Mm. Like literally, and I started to laugh out loud. I was like, oh my God, does anybody else know this? Um, <laughs> so it's really important. It's really, that was such a gorgeous experience. My God, I feel so blessed. And now I teach other people how to tap in to it is to bind surrender everything just melts away there are no problems here there's no negativity and because it's in presence it's to do with presence and, and there's um there's no negativity and there's no overwhelm or anything so when you tap in here you're you're shifting lit, literally on an energetic uh, level into a new reality into a new reality of who you really are and you're leaving all the crap behind now you can tune into that if you really need to like if you really miss it but you know you can uh, <laughs> if you're you need a quick dose of, you need a quick yeah you need a little you're addicted yeah you need a little quick dose a little quick hit yep <laughs> i'm sorry to say i'm sorry to say it does form these very powerful emotions of you know maybe whatever people do if they argue a lot or something it does create chemicals in the brain and then the brain gets addicted to it i am sorry to say mm -hmm. um even though everybody will complain oh my god no i don't like this what are you talking about i can't stand it but it is a lot of people are into drama um and i'm not judging at all um mm -hmm. but i'm just saying when you tune into um the truth of who you really are it's um the most beautiful thing you can do because you're tuning into divine love because that's what you are you are divine love and very importantly what i have to say talking about practicalities you know what it gets blocked it gets blocked mm. um but this is what you have to realize or what we have to realize who you really are is beyond the conditioned self it's beyond all of that so you know that feeling of resistance a lot of my work is about resistance and allowance resistance mm. allowance so that feeling is swimming against the tide of life and the mind chatter oh, i remember that from years ago it nearly drove me mad the mind chatter thank god i'm just god i'm tuning back into what it was like <laughs> I know. It was never shut up like it was awful uh, and that's all gone now for me gone gone oh oh thank god i'm just really i'm just getting a moment of gratitude over that <laughs> oh my god so the mind chatter like what i would say the resistance of the pain is worse than the pain itself have you found that amanda oh my god yes, yes. oh geez the resistance of the pain is worse than the pain itself that took me a good few years to realize and now you can accept a bit of it you, you need resistance just like um resistance in a plane i love to fly helicopters and like an airplane you need resistance against the wing in order to take off you need resistance sometimes if you're training in your muscles you need resistance so what it is accept a bit we don't have to get our knickers in a twist over oh god i have to lose all resistance in my life they don't you can resist you know you can accept a bit and allow it's just about Ah, oh, you know, allowing so much and just letting go and falling back into who you really are and allowing life so that it can bring you the perfect, beautiful uh, experiences that you need on a silver platter or whatever it is. And um, you can embrace life and actually enjoy it because, you know, it's, it's finite. The body, who you, who you really are, never dies, but the body will. So you may as well have fun while you're here. Um, <laughs> but that heavy energy that I'm talking about, it will cover your truth. So what I would say is dare to look, dare to look. And, and funny enough, what you were talking about, Amanda, at the beginning, oh, uh, absolutely right. I actually have a practice called the Becoming Aware Listening Practice. And you give your attention to the wounded parts of yourself, usually from the past, from your childhood. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'd say to your listeners? Sometimes like you'll do anything, you'll do anything, but I'm not going there. You know, you'll go to the fridge, you'll, they'll pick up the Chardonnay, they'll stop, do anything, but look at that, whatever that is. And what I would say to anybody who's afraid of that, because we all know what that's like, myself included, you will not fall into the abyss there is no abyss you will always be caught by loving arms dare to look and it will last what 90 seconds cry 
do whatever you have to do, shake it off, shake it out of your body. And it will, if you do it in truth, it will be released from your cells. Mm. And you won't have to experience that exact energy again. Otherwise, your inner child will run the show. And you don't want your life to be run by a 12-year-old, a six-year-old, making decisions. I mean, do you want a six-year-old making decisions? 48 cents, and I am being serious. Like, mm -hmm. um, that's what it can feel like, you know? So you neutralize the energy through expression. Go within this uh, listening practice. The first step is soften. Oh, the first step is acknowledge. Acknowledge. Because you can be going around through your life and it's like there's this low hum in the background and it's irritating, but it's been there for so many years that you don't even notice it. It's like acknowledge there's something going on here. I can live a better life. I'm, I'm not settling for this anymore. I'm taking a stand for myself. So you acknowledge there's something up, there's something moving. I need to, this energy. And then you soften and soften to listen and you allow whatever needs to come up, come up. And then you express, uh, whether it's crying or whatever the expression may be. Um, and then there are a good few more steps to it. Mm. And you tune into that, that, that child within and you give her the words she always wanted to hear. And you neutralize the energy through expression. This is all creativity. This is like the other part of creativity. You know, and you write, you cry, you acknowledge, and this literally creates space on an energetic level. And therefore, when the space is created, then you can tap into your creativity. Then the creative energy has space to move through you and your energy field. Then you can receive it. But as long as there's all of that um, heavy energy surrounding you that you're not acknowledging, you're going to be blocked. And you're going to yes, wonder, yes. why do I have writer's block? Or why can't I paint a painting? Why am I not great? Why am I not really feeling it with my children? Whatever it may be, it's usually because of that. Wow, so much. Oh, so much good stuff. It's very, you are inspiring just to listen to. Not only, <laughs> literally, what we said earlier, you don't even have to use words. Like your, your frequency of your voice alone, the yeah. sound is inspiring and I and Thank you. words Thank are you. so supportive of that. I had a, a little momentary potential aha here at the end and I want to I just want to share it with you and see if if, yeah. if you agree or what your thoughts are because mm -hmm. I had never thought of it this way. I've done a lot of inner child work. I do think that's so essential on our journeys. People talk about it in different ways. Essentially, I think it's all the same. And you once again shared it beautifully in that we need to tune into that part of us and, and heal that, express that mm -hmm. part, uh, clear space, right? Open that channel. And as you were sharing that so beautifully, I, I was then the thought occurred when we think of children either ourselves or others, we often think that's when we have been quote unquote most creative. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that mm -hmm. child. Oh, look at them painting without thinking or worrying. Oh, look at them exactly. creating this, uh, this building out of Legos. Oh, where did that idea come from? And I think so many of us as adults witness children as being these incredibly creative beings. Like, where did that idea come from? How did they think to do, right? And all of a sudden, I heard as you were talking about getting back in touch with that inner child of ours. Mm -hmm. It's as if when we can move through the sludge and all of the pain and all of the repression and all of the, you know, the resistance we have developed by saying, Hey, what's going on in there? You know, tell me what's going on. Let's, let's have a conversation. Let me, let me hear from you. When we're able to open up that flow, we are in essence, reconnecting with the child within us, which is our creative or it's, it's where the creative force would stem from, our, our divine nature. And yet we all, at least my opinion is, we are closest to the divine when we are born. You know, we're, we're most, I, be, I believe, I don't know if this is true, but my, my current belief is that that would be when we were the most, con we, we, we have less stuff covering that connection mm -hmm. up, right? We have less stuff that has developed, that we have learned, that we have identified with, that we have taken on, that we have experienced, that may create uh, false beliefs, false identities, etc. And so as we return to the childlike nature within us, that is our creative our creative force. Would you agree? Is, is there a connection between child and creativity that you've seen before? 
absolutely you're you're correct in what you're saying i'm just tuning back you are um closer there hasn't been so many layers deposited on you at that stage but one way i'd just change the per the perspective is to say you're never separate and there is no degree of you being closer because when you go beyond duality into oneness and who you really are you're beyond duality there so there's no i'm closer i was closer when i was six months old and now the truth is it just feels separate but you were never separate thank you brilliant clarification actually thank you and that mm -hmm. is a very important perspective shift i believe mm. Mm. because when you own that yes when you own that the comfort the comfort there is no that's what my work is all about separate if you really want to boil it down separation to oneness the loneliness the stress the anxiety you know when you kind of say i've had enough of that i want something different i want to enjoy my life you know i'm whatever it is and you just the woman just stops because she's just had enough and she realizes and it can be painful but it's such a powerful 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 moment to just decide that she's going to do something about it to open herself up it's a glorious glorious her soul is so happy at that moment it's a glorious um choice i call it a pure choice mm. and it's powerful it's powerful and then to open up to the truth of who you really are is the most important thing you can ever do because it has to do with owning and standing in your power expressing who you really are as divine love because you are divine love yeah and i want to say two more things and i'm going to see if there's anything left that you haven't yet said one is i want to re-articulate this to make sure all of our listeners are hearing it i'm hearing it that creativity our creative nature our true nature is only found in the present moment it is by being present and presence and i'm grateful because that has played such a significant part in my journey and and it's not done i keep coming back to it and yet every time i come back to it there's a deeper and deeper knowing and a deeper and deeper experience of it the other thing you said earlier and you pointed to it again now is the to sit in the knowing that that is who we truly are and i think in your earlier story you shared how that can feel really scary and intimidating. And that's been my experience. When I reveal that to myself, who I truly am through my own glimpses and understandings and experiences, I noticed that I was actually blocking it because I was terrified of it. And I think a lot mm -hmm. of us think we're blocking it because, um, because it's almost the opposite. Like, well, that's not who I am, but no, even I think what I heard you share in terms of the frustration, like I don't even know how to express this, to articulate this, that feels frustrating. And then imagine when we do remember who we truly are at various stages of our life experience, not that we never were, but that we are remembering that. Mm. I think for many of us, it can feel frustrating it can, well, what am I to do now? I'm stuck in this body. Or maybe we're terrified of the potentiality of that. Oh my goodness, how powerful am I truly? So I think there's a lot that comes up emotionally when we have that remembrance, which I think may be one reason we block it. Mm, it's also because I feel absolutely I agree. I also think it has to do with the fact that our power is taken away as children so much of the time and we associated our expression of power with being hurt or experiencing pain. So it's it's like there's an association literally in your brain where you know the neurons are firing and wiring in that particular way where you associate expressing your truth with pain. So your 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 psyche is almost saying don't do that again. Don't, no, don't express it. No, that's scary. Don't go there. So it's just a very practical point of view as well. I mean, it's not even um, spiritual. It's like happening in the brain. So yeah. the way to get around that, the way to get around that, I feel, is, and uh, the, like the how, how do you become more creative, is the, the one thing you can do from a practical point of view is invite it into your life. Like, I am yet to talk about presence as well. Um, 
I decided because I'm very I'm I'm very practical. I scheduled um, uh, tw- twenty minutes and half an hour every single morning for about a month. End of it, and I got present, went within, invited this creative force, book of poetry after twenty eight days. A book of amazing poetry. Mm. Oh my God, she said modestly. But you know what I mean. Um, so, <laughs> so what I would say is, be friend because it's not coming. It's not really. It's coming from spirit. So hey, hey. but mm. I would say, befriend stillness and anchor your anxious self in the invisible world and in the comfort of the present moment. Go out in nature you know, go to the beach if you can, ground yourself, literally take your shoes off, touch a tree, literally ground your energy field and open up to hearing what I call the whisperings of awareness so that you can be guided through your life, through your business and to create whatever you need to create. And what I would say from a practical point of view, write and don't start, don't put pressure on yourself, like I'm going to write whatever it is, Write all the the rubbish out first. Like if you've got anything coming up, write it, burn it, get rid of it first. And then issues can become untangled. One of the tools I mentioned, I didn't go into it. One of them is called light writing. And um, it's a way to ask questions from the light and receive answers from the light. And it's so delicious. Oh my God, it's so comforting. Because again, you know, you're connected and you're separate. Because you know the way, like you can feel a bit... um, separate from who you really are this is a way of connecting with who you really are but anyway and then from this space what i would say lastly make a pure choice from this space of awareness you choose don't bother choosing when you're stuck in your ego you know don't even bother when you're in push mode um from this space of who you really are make a pure choice decide what it is you want and if you're not sure you know the flavor of what you want you want to feel freedom you want to feel expansive you know whatever it is and put it out there once is enough you know don't do it from a desperation energy and then when you frequent when you live in this space of who you really are more and more bit by bit every day you will realize that you are this creative energy Mm. wow marianne that is deliciously insightful and inspiring and i want to save some of your uh, tricks and tools and insights and wisdom for them to find out more with you specifically. So for now, all of those listening who are like, holy moly, I want more. Well, <laughs> good. Go find her because we do, we have, while time is an illusion and completely limitless, we are limiting <laughs> this container of space and time that we have created. So go find her letgoandknow.com deeperdestiny.com I will make sure the links are in the show notes you can learn massively more about all of these things you can learn to how to implement them into your own life how to practice these practical tools how to experience more of your deeper destiny live your juicy, delicious, expansive life that you are here for by getting into the present moment, by by tuning into your creative force and frequency. So with that, I would love to pivot to my final questions and then we will we will say our goodbyes. All right, Marianne, my first mm-hmm. question is who is a source of inspiration for you and why? My children pop into my mind first off uh, because they remind me of how I was when I was that age and because they're so connected with spirit um and you know I love them so much and I feel connected when I'm with them even though they drive me bananas sometimes oh my god I do adore them (laughs) <laughs> and they inspire me <laughs> they inspire me and that's what popped up um first so my children beautiful beautiful and that connection again not that we're ever not connected but just mm-hmm. the, the pureness mm-hmm. of it right the, the unadulterated expression of it that we can see in children beautiful mm-hmm. second question what 
place or activity most inspires you right now? Um, oh God, do you know what I'm gonna, oh my God, well, the truth of it is where I am. Do you know what I just realized, Amanda? This is a real duh moment. <laughs> um, I realized that I've been spending the last 20 years creating a wildlife sanctuary and I only copped onto that like two days ago. <laughs> two days ago after spending 20 years. I'm like, somebody said it to me. Somebody like, you have, you have curlews on your land? I'm like, yeah. You know they're nearly extinct. Like, that's huge. And I said, well, yeah, I left the grass long and I never replanted and we left it organic and we, we, we planted 200 trees and we have wild foxes and bunnies and bats and we take in um, horses and stray cats. I was like, oh, and he said, oh, yeah, well, that's, so you have a wildlife sanctuary. I'm like, oh, yeah, I have a wildlife sanctuary. So literally now, with the flowers coming out and the clematis and the honeysuckle and the natural white thorn, the fragrance is uh, captivating me. I am actually totally in love with this place, which is beautiful because I, I'm living in the present moment. Because I before I had traveled the world and mm. I get a bit... Um, Ooh, how will I put it? Yeah, sad at not being able to travel as much now. And so, because I like I went everywhere and I adore traveling and I love New Zealand and um, oh, I love Thailand, Malaysia, loved Southern California, love Canada. Um, I thought Japan was great, uh, places in Europe. I, I absolutely love different places and I have stories that I could tell you, but there's no way we'd have any time. But funny enough, because I'm living in the present moment more and more, I'm just, you know what, being happier and happier with where I am now in this moment. And there's a lot that I have to be grateful for here. So this where I am is inspiring me most now. Yes. Yes, I was, I was, I'm smiling from ear to ear as I hear you say this. And as you said, oh my gosh, I'm having one of those like duh moments. I thought, and I wasn't sure where you were going to go, but in my mind, I heard, well, she's realizing that everything that inspires her is in her, like she is surrounded by in this very moment, your children, your home, you know, I'm thinking it's not something out there beyond yeah. in the past, something maybe that might happen in the future. Yeah. It's happening right now. Right yeah, that's what and you're surrounded exactly. by it. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. All right. Third question. And this is for the readers. And I happen to have been a, an avid reader. So I love to know what has, um, through the very limited <laughs> medium of words, a favorite book that has inspired oh. you on your journey. Um, oh, my God. That's really difficult. It's my most tricky question, I'll be honest. It's tricky. Do you know what? I find, I wonder, can I, can I get around? Will she notice if I skirt around this? Uh, I, find, <laughs> I find that I'm given the perfect book at the perfect time. The most important thing in my life was to um, acknowledge my experience my childhood experience because I had my power taken away and you know I wasn't allowed by a dominant father uh, to have any kind of you know, intuition would have been laughed at so I squashed um, it, it was squashed my whole knowing so um, me acknowledging my own truth and wisdom was huge and then after I did all that yes I did do a lot of reading and it's funny the way I read sometimes I'm like yeah they're right yeah and, and sometimes every so often I go yeah no that's not right no he's not he's not that's not right very it's not often but because I can remember so um there I mean I love I, I do love Eckhart Tolle, you know, The Power of the Now. I love, right now, I'm reading Joe Dispenza, Becoming Supernatural, mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I find the whole scientific aspect um, and the quantum physics aspect uh, fascinating. And the reason I like that is because he, I, he has had a couple of experiences that are, are, are talked about in the book, supernatural kind of, as he calls it, experiences to do with, um, you know, beyond time and space. I'm like, yep, I've had those too. So it's interesting for me because it's, it's, it's unusual what happened to me. Um, so it's nice. It's kind of nice to know that somebody else has had something similar happen to him. I think, um, I don't know, when he was 40 or something, he had a, he, he went deep in a meditation and he had a very interesting time where he met his 
kind of future self uh, self it was interesting um and i just kind of also read recently an um, autobiography of a yogi um and uh, because the reason i like that is because he alludes again seeing a pattern to just you yeah, know realities beyond what we're aware of and people doing the highly unusual things and uh, again funny enough supernatural things um just beyond beyond the beyonds and they go way deep in, into meditation i am into going within and i'm very interested in um becoming more and more of your potential it's just it, it fascinates me because i know it's right there for the hmm, not for the taking, but for the enjoying. Mm. And so whatever book I need, it just comes, it comes, it comes. Are there any more? Um, I have so many that I just enjoy. Um, I adore poetry. Um, I adore John O'Donoghue's poetry, um, an Irish poet. I find that very moving and his poetry directly kind of links in with my own. Um, totally on the same frequency i really understand where he's coming from i suppose you know both being irish as well but it's not because of that at all it's nothing really to do with that and uh anything else none spring to mind except the point uh, the point i'm trying to make is just be open to whatever you're drawn to and then there might be a long period we don't read that's very important as well because sometimes we have to unlearn what we yes. know yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a whole episode about that too called un uh, Unlearning uh, <laughs> What We Know. So there's, oh my gosh, Marianne, those are brilliant book um, book insights. And, and my favorite takeaway probably, I mean, I'll make sure all of those books are also listed. So if anyone's feeling called to check it out, you can find it easily or just go and find it. Um, but you said that, yeah, the, the right book comes at the right time or the right message. And I, I am a full believer. So sometimes this question can be fun to see, well, what along your journey at what point was what you needed? So anyhow, I resonate with so many of those books and, and teachers. And I also mm. appreciate how, all, in essence, I feel like something you are here for uh, to do is to see that we're all pointing back to the same truth, that same oneness. And so for you to find it in the, the supernatural, the, the um, neuroscience of it with Joe Dispenza and from the very present based, you know, oh, this is all there is, Eckhart Tolle, very aloof, you know, very, and yet very well studied. And then the uh, autobiography of a yogi and, and the more, you know, Eastern philosophies. And I, I just love that they're, you're you're pulling from all of them because at the end of the day there's nothing but one right there's nothing there mm -hmm. none of them are different we're all the same we're mm -hmm. all connected and so to see the common thread that's a very uh that's a very important thing in my life as well in my experience so mm -hmm. thank you for sharing a v wide variety that are all point back to the same truth mm, you're very welcome you're very welcome this conversation has really been more than I expected even, and not that I come in with expectations, it has simply delighted me to to an extreme level. And I am feeling the, the, um, the energy in who you are. I can feel how you are so grounded and tuned into that, that you are leading with your heart, that you are speaking from that creative force. And what's just delightful to me is that it comes out in this very playful, excited, energized way. So for anyone who sits around thinking, ah, oh, well, when you're aware, or when you surrender, <laughs> uh, it's really boring and dull and you speak really slow and uh, no. <laughs> There are so many ways to express mm -hmm. it. And, and Marianne, you've offered a delightful one to me in terms of, yes, your, your energy and your playfulness and your enthusiasm for life. And I really am grateful to you for spending this time with me, with us. Uh, and I want you to know how much I appreciate that. Oh, you are so welcome. It was an absolute delight for me to spend this time with you, Amanda, and with the listeners. I mean, I can't wait to get to know them. Hopefully we'll be able to connect. Such a delight. I really, really enjoyed it. And it was just lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. So yes, those listening, and if you've I know someone out there, many of you felt this. So do reach out to Marianne. I'll make sure that you know how to connect with her. Um, again, let go and know.com, deeperdestiny.com. 
Marianne McGuire. Look her up, reach out, get on a call with her, enjoy her energy, look at the programs that she has, her offerings, and, and, and be inspired to take that next step of, of reconnecting. Again, we're never disconnected, but from, mm-hmm. to remember that connection within us, to really feel that connection uh, on a deeper level. And thank you for tuning in again. If you enjoyed this show, of course, share it with someone, send it to your friend, your family member, leave a review or a rating that will help these sh- this show plus the other sh- um, interviews that I have reach an even wider audience. So if you could take a moment to do that, it would be much appreciated and be sure to subscribe. There are so many more phenomenal guests that I'm having on this show, much like Marianne, who are going to leave you feeling uplifted and inspired to go through your day. So be sure to subscribe so that you are notified of the next recording.